Keyboards, the companion of a gamer, a hacker, a creator, and pretty much everyone in our days. This is the medium for you to express your thoughts by text on screens for all to see. Either you're using a Mac or a PC on Windows or Linux or whatever, the main functions of a keyboard are the same. Functions. Like the F keys on the top of this device. Hello there, my name is here and this is how and why. Today we're going to talk about the function keys on a keyboard and how to properly use them. But before we begin, we make videos weekly, so if you don't want to miss a thing, subscribe now to our channel. Now let's get into it. NEC, Singer and IBM, among other companies, released their products based on the early typewriter architecture with the 26 letters of the Latin alphabet keeping the same position. Although there were and there are still some models that went a bit too far having an alternate key positioning which was not very appreciated. Nevertheless, for the first time people were able to write and rewrite despite making typos with no consequences. This was quite revolutionary. Back then, using a typewriter was a precision task, as you shouldn't make any mistakes, any typos. But if you did, there were some ways to correct it. For example, you could take a razor and scratch the surface of the page, just leaving a smudge behind. Or you could retype the whole thing altogether, from scratch. Either way, it was time-consuming. Those keys were very light compared to their predecessors, increasing the typing speed of the operator. Copying and pasting were the top features of a computer, as you could write something once and type it again in no time. Those features though, along with others, required extra buttons. The control or option and shift or command keys were added. Then the tab button was added and then the escape and the function keys. The function keys are programmable buttons that do a specific job without moving your mouse or pressing multiple keys. They are essential as computing capabilities increased. First, the F keys appeared on the FlexiWriter keyboard in 1968. It had 13 function keys on the right of the device. These had a specific job programmed by the user himself, and this was quite neat. Then, in 1972, HP released the 9830A model, which featured 10 function keys on the left of the device. Years passed and the F keys developed up to a point that IBM released this iconic model, which cemented the amount and positioning of the F keys. At the same time, many software were using the same keys for the same utilities. So let's begin with F1. The F1 button, used as the help key in almost every program, opens a help screen when this key is pressed. It also enters the CMOS setup. In addition, F1 along with the Windows key would open the Microsoft Windows Help and Support Center. It also opens the task panel. The F2 button in Microsoft Windows renames a highlighted icon, file or folder in all versions of Windows. In Microsoft Excel, edits the active cell. Alt, Ctrl and F2 open document window in Microsoft Word. Ctrl plus F2 displays the print preview window in Microsoft Word. Like the F1 button, it enters the CMOS setup. The F3 button is used for many, many features, but we will highlight the following. Often opens a search feature for many programs, including Microsoft Windows, when at the Windows desktop. In MS-DOS or Windows command line, F3 repeats the last command entered. In Microsoft Word, Ctrl plus F3 will lowercase any highlighted text. Shift plus F3 changes the text in Microsoft Word from upper to lowercase or a capital letter at the beginning of every word. Windows key plus F3 opens the advanced find window in Microsoft Outlook. It also opens the search function in Windows Explorer. Last but not least, it opens Mission Control on the Apple computer running the Mac OS operating system. F4 is quite famous for its use along with the Alt button, which closes the program window currently active in Microsoft Windows. It also repeats the last action performed in all versions of the Microsoft Office. For the old Windows enthusiasts, F4 opens the Find window in Windows 95 to Windows XP. In all modern internet browsers, Pressing F5 refreshes or reloads the page or document window. 
Control plus F5 forces a complete refresh of the web page, clearing the cache and downloading all contents of the page again. It also refreshes the list of contents in a folder. F5 starts a slideshow in PowerPoint. F6 is not so commonly used, but it moves the cursor to the address bar in Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox and other Internet browsers. In many laptops, it reduces the laptop speaker volume along with the FN button. Control Shift plus F6 opens to another open Microsoft Word document. F7 F7 is commonly used to spell check and grammar check a document in Microsoft programs such as Microsoft Word and Outlook. Shift plus F7 runs the thesaurus check on the word highlighted. It also turns on current browsing in Mozilla Firefox. It also increases the laptop speaker volume on some laptops along with the FN button. But if you belong in the previous category when FN plus F6 is increasing the laptop speaker volume, FN plus F7 decreases the volume. F8 Function key 8 is used to enter the Windows startup menu, commonly used to access Windows safe mode. It is also used by some computers to access the Windows recovery system, but it may require a Windows installation CD. It also displays a thumbnail image for all workspaces in Mac OS. F9 It is used to refresh a document in Microsoft Word. It also sends and receives emails in Microsoft Outlook. F9 also opens the measurements bar in Quark. It reduces the laptop screen brightness on some laptops along with the FN button. With Mac OS X or later, it displays a thumbnail for each window on a single workspace. And again in Mac OS, F9 along with the FN key opens the mission control. F10 In Microsoft Windows, F10 activates the menu bar of an open application. Shift plus F10 is the same as right-clicking on a highlighted icon, file or internet link. Very importantly, it can access the hidden recovery partition on Compaq, HP and Sony computers. And as F1 and F2, F10 enters the CMOS setup in some computers. It also shows the keyboard shortcuts on Windows Explorer and other software. And with Mac OS X or later, shows all open windows of the active program. F11 It enters and exits full screen mode in all modern internet browsers. Control plus F11 as the computer is starting to access the hidden recovery partition on many Dell computers. But pressing F11 by itself accesses the hidden recovery partition on eMachines, Gateway and Lenovo computers. With macOS computers 10.4 or later, it hides all open windows and shows the desktop. F12 F12 opens the Save As window in Microsoft Word. Control plus F12 opens a document in Word. Shift plus F12 saves the Microsoft Word document like Control S. Control Shift plus F12 prints a document in Microsoft Word. F12 on its own previews a page in Microsoft Expression Web. It also opens Firebug on Browser Debug Tool. With an Apple running Mac OS 10.4 or later, F12 shows or hides the dashboard. Pressing it multiple times, it accesses the list of bootable devices on a computer at startup, allowing you to select a different device to boot from, for example a hard drive, a CD or a USB drive. But wait, because we're not done yet. You see, there are some other keys that are not referred to F13 to F15 anymore. Instead, they are referred to as print screen, scroll lock, and pause break. Early IBM computers also had F16 to F24 keys. Although some argue that F16 to F20 are today the number lock, slash, the asterisk, and minus button. However, keyboards with F21 to F24 are no longer in use. How did you find this episode? Let us know by pressing your like or dislike button. And don't forget, you can ask anything about science, computer or history down in the comments, and we will make a video answering your questions. Until then, thanks for watching.